In this video, we're going to talk about cations and anions on the periodic table. So of course, when we're talking about this, we are going to completely ignore group four over here. These do not form ions typically. Okay. Also, when we're talking about this, we're going to pretty much ignore the transition metals. These have their own rules. Okay, so when we're talking about this, we're talking about groups one, two, three, five, six, seven. Also, as you guys know from the reading, group eight don't form ions. These are the noble gases, and they're called noble because they don't react with anything. And that's, uh, it's hypothesized that they have that because these guys have eight valence electrons, and that is the goal of all of these other elements. They want to get to eight valence electrons, exception of course being helium, which only has two valence electrons because it only has two protons, only has two. Everything else has eight. So just keep that in mind, helium is the exception. But anyway, okay, so the easiest way for elements on this left-hand side of group four, so groups one, two, or what I call three over here, the easiest way for them to get to eight electrons, to get to this stable um, noble gas configuration, is to drop an electron. Okay, and as we remember, electrons are negatively charged. So over here, the easiest way for these groups to get an 8 is to just gain. So fluorine is really, really close. It has 7 valence electrons. It needs 8, so it's going to gain an electron. When that happens, these become negatively charged. And then oppositely, we're kind of ignoring the transition metals, but over here as well. These guys are going to have opposite charges. So these guys were negative. These guys are positive. Okay, and so this is like kind of an easy way to remember, remember metals versus non-metals as well. So remember that metal non-metal line kind of goes like this. Mostly over here we've got negative non-metals. Over here we've got positive ions. Okay, so ions are positive. We call them cations because they're positive. Like cats have paws. Yeah, I'm awesome. Okay, and then over here, these are negative. We call them anions. So an means like negative or without. So those are negatives. So there's a difference between positives or negatives. If it's on the left-hand side of group four, they're positive cations. Right-hand side, they're negative anions. Okay, so to determine the actual charge is really kind of easy. For our positive cations, it's equal to the group number. So over here, group number one, they're going to have a positive one charge. Group number two, anything here is going to be positive two charge. Group number three, it's going to be positive three charge. So sodium ion, positive one. Potassium ion, positive one. All the way down, all of these. Hydrogen ion, also called a proton. Over here, they're going to have 2 plus charge all the way down. Calcium ion, strontium, etc. And over here, 3 plus. Aluminum is going to have 3 plus. Gallium is going to have 3 plus, etc., etc. Okay, over here, this is where the math gets kind of weird. To determine the charge of the anion, it's 8 minus the group number. Okay, so 8 minus 5 is going to be minus 3, right? So, that, But this makes sense. You're taking 8, oh, I'm sorry, group number minus 8 to make it negative. There we go. It's just the difference there. All these are minus 3. Okay, over here, these are all minus 2. Over here, these are all just minus 1. Two minus, two minus, it's equivalent to write two minus or minus two. I learned chemistry a while ago, so, and the nomenclature's kind of changed since then. So, ignoring my typo from earlier, this is the group number minus eight. 
these guys are always going to be negative. Everything in group 7 is minus 1 charge. Everything in group 6 is minus 2 charge. Everything in group 5 is minus 3 charge. Okay. <coughs> Okay, and so to calculate the number of electrons in a cation or anion is really, really easy. So you can look at the charge, and that's how, for the positive ones, that's how many electrons have been lost. So looking at lithium, atomic number is three. It normally has three electrons. It lost one. It now has two electrons. Beryllium, it normally has four electrons. It lost two. Now it has two electrons, and that makes sense because... It wants to look like helium, and that has two electrons. Okay, so let's switch up colors here. Let's try blue. Let's do our anions next. Okay, so these have gained electrons. They're more negative because electrons are, boom, negative. Okay, so phosphorus normally has 15 electrons, and in this case would have 18 electrons, and that makes sense because that's the noble gas configuration it's going to. It wants to be similar to argon. Same thing with sulfur. It normally has 16, gained two more. Now it has 18. Chlorine normally has 17, gained one more. Now has 18. Okay, so that's kind of the idea of how you can figure out the number of electrons. And it's going to have the same number of electrons as its nearest noble gas friend.